Well, we've come right to the top of the Cathedral Tower, and as you'd imagine, it's a fantastic view up here. But of course, for over 150 years, our economy and our skyline was dominated by cotton mills. Many have become derelict or have now been turned into apartments. But as JC Norman's been finding out, some of those buildings from the Industrial Revolution have become part of a cultural revolution. Time's been less than kind to many of them, but when cotton was king, the mills weaved themselves into our industrial history. They created riches, transformed communities, and changed lives for better and for worse. You can't get away from you know the fact that these places, you know, these were Blake's dark satanic mills. You worked in the mill because you had to, not because you wanted to. They helped make Manchester Cottonopolis. And Lancashire, the 19th century textile manufacturing centre of the world. Here at Quarry Bank Mill in style, you can see and hear exactly what they would have been like in their industrial heyday. But mills like this are museum pieces and few and far between. In fact, look inside many of them today and you'll find a story not about cotton, but about creativity. So how important is the mill to your work as an artist? Well this space is essential, um, as you can see it's, it's quite a big uh, space, a lot of storeroom, all the material that I will be using, glass, mirrors, uh, stretchers, um, and as you can see wonderful light. Sean Cahetty has made Wood End Mill in Mosley his artistic home. The mill was built by the banks of the River Tame in 1848. It now offers studio space to 20 up-and-coming artists. And with history all around, his art is influenced by and echoes the mill's textile past. You want all the paint to be running one way. You don't want it then to start blurring and shifting 90 degrees, do you know what I mean? The idea isn't to blend, it's to make a, a weave or a weave-like pattern on the surface. In the days gone by, they were thick with dust, hot and humid to protect the cotton. Now they're cold, in winter freezing. Wander the corridors and you see how the influx of artists has helped transform and bring new life to a building created for a different age. So why do mills and the modern artists make such natural bedfellows? I don't think anything would happen without it. Um, since I graduated, straight away I, I got a studio and it, it's just meant that I've carried on. I've carried on working, developing, you know, thinking about ideas and just being able to make loads of mess. There's nothing else here bar your work. You don't have to put the washing on or tidy up. And I can also get some really good feedback off other people in the mill. So if I'm doing something and I'm stuck, I go to somebody else's studio and I, it's like being back at university again. You know, you get in a, a real good kind of creative environment. Take a look out of Gordon Clegg's studio window and you see what remains of Car Hill Mill in Mosley. These days, a thriving artistic community can mean the difference between development and demolition for an ageing mill. Are you aware that you, you know, are you aware of the history of the building? Very much so, because I mean, I, I've lived in Steeler Bridge for 62 years. My parents lived in Steeler Bridge, my grandparents, so they're from cotton mill stock, you know, and I've seen them, I've well, not seen them built, but I've seen most of them being pulled down now and turned into flats. And, you know, like the one here's just fallen down next door. Uh, but, you know, if we can keep this going, like this, a bigger air. In 1860, there were over two and a half thousand mills in the historic Lancashire region. The industry employed around half a million people. Today, recession has slowed the trend to turn mills into apartments, and a growing number across the northwest are kept alive by art. I've come to Vernon Mill in Stockport built in the late 19th century and home to one of the largest artist groups in the country. Over 50 have studios here. 
It's freezing yeah, cold. It is. Why on earth are these spaces popular with artists? I think because there's so many like-minded people gathered together, so many creative people, um, that there's always somebody to feed off and somebody to talk to that other people wouldn't understand, and also because the rent's very cheap. Malcolm Croft pays £11 a week for his studio. He took up painting five years ago when a serious accident ended his career in photojournalism. Well, I didn't go to art college, so I've learnt a lot from other people, mainly about the art market and galleries and things like that. Not so much about painting. I just get on with it and do my own thing. But actually finding out about how the gallery system works, I've learnt a lot. So, why are artists so popular with a modern mill owner? If you put one company up there, 60,000 square feet, it's good, it's easy. Um, but once that company goes, then you're left with a big hole, a lot of space empty. So it made good sense to us to, to break it up over time and put artists in. If you lose one artist, which you will do, there are other artists who will replace them. So you would lose a little bit of income, but you wouldn't lose the whole of the income. So in the end, it was well worthwhile doing. It can be a prolific partnership. Alan Knight's work is among the most popular coming out of the mills. If it helps to keep the buildings, you know, intact, you know, and existing, that's a very good thing, you know, because otherwise, you know, maybe the buildings will get knocked down and that would be a pity because, I mean, some of them are really listed anyway, I think. But, uh, yeah, it's a good use of uh, for those buildings that otherwise would probably uh, be empty and just, you know, deteriorate, especially during a recession at the moment, you know, when firms are struggling, you know, so. Mill art isn't a movement yet, but if it ever becomes one, its heart will be here in the North West. Finally, to a city centre art gallery to ask the all-important question. How much are these paintings coming out of the mills worth? <laughs> well, a lot of these paintings, they can range anything from £150 up to, uh, up to a few thousand pounds. Um, obviously, it depends on the artist, depends on the reputation, depends on how much work they've put into the, into the uh, into particular piece. Also, we've got Alan Knight's piece here. And, um, and some of his larger pieces that is going for, obviously this is £745. This is kind of a good reflection of, of the amount of work that is put in. The mill and the present day artist are a pragmatic match. Old cotton and modern culture, weaving themselves a new future together. <laughs>